Kia ora guys, Bird here. Welcome to episode 5 of Thorncraft 5. We're currently staring into the sun. Not a recommended practice in the real world, but it's okay to do it in Thorncraft because, well, not Minecraft rather, because it's just a white square <laughs> in the sky. Some work has been done here in the Thorncraft 5 world here now. I've got some more uh, oak trees being farmed up here on this area here. I think I'm actually going to move this oak tree farm down into this area here later on and I'll explain why. We have a wheat farm over here now and also the sugarcane farm. And we can also see that I have some cobblestone set up here. This is the first uh, inklings of our sort of little hobbit hole uh, type situation going on here. I'm not 100% happy with it at the moment. I think I might uh, rework this shape a little bit but just a good idea to get that stuff uh, down and you know working on it just in the background. I think that's the way that I'm going to work on building in this playthrough like I did with the TC4 world. I'm just going to kind of do most of that off camera and most of the stuff to do with magic, all of the stuff to do with magic hopefully will be done on camera or as much as possible. A little more of a change that you may not immediately notice as well is that I also have uh, basically turned myself into a lawnmower for the last hour and a half. I've been going through and getting rid of all of the tall grass in the surrounding area just to try and increase the frame rate in some areas. I haven't done a whole lot. There's like a whole area over here still I haven't done. I haven't done up there. I have done up by the house. I think a little bit over there, a little bit in there and kind of up behind there as well. <laughs> a lot of work and that did at least give me an excuse to uh, get enough seeds to actually get this wheat farm up and running which is actually almost ready to harvest. Uh, just a little bit of a pro tip for those who are newer to the game. If you have a 9x9 area of wheat like this, generally speaking that is going to be enough wheat to, uh, to you know, keep yourself fed. <laughs> it's not going to be a great food source, it is bread. But you know, it's a, it's enough to get by I suppose. The next step after this obviously will be to get a cow farm set up. I'm not too sure where I'm going to put that. But uh, yeah, <laughs> we need to get some cows over here. There's only a few left and I have, I've had a look around as well as some uh, over in the savannah area that's over there. It looks like the night approacheth. So it's time to go ahead and enter inside this place. I've also done a little bit of exploring and found some sheep. I unfortunately didn't take any shears so I had to kill those sheep to get ourselves a bed. Let's go ahead and get F1 pressed at long last there. Sleep the night away. Oh man. So today, in today's episode, I said last time what I'd like to do is uh, do a little bit more reading of stuff here in the Thormonomicon, but the thing that I noticed about that episode is that it got quite boring pretty quickly there. We read through almost everything that's in here and I said that I was going to read everything else. I think I won't do that in hindsight because there's still a heck of a lot of stuff here. Uh, maybe some of the more interesting stuff that we need to get to later. Basic artificing or like the thermometer for example is I think something that I want to get started with today's episode with. We might read that at some point. Uh, let's see, yeah, there's one other thing in here that I forgot to read about, which is the new enchantments. We'll just quickly take a look at that. Now, if you want to read this yourselves, guys, you can go ahead and pause the video, but there's basically two new enchantments. Haste, you can put that on your feet footwear, which makes you run faster, and Repair, which you can put on tools, and I think Armor as well, uh, which will make the durability repair, but you can only do it on magical stuff, so uh, Thormium, as well as some tools that we'll get to later on. Oh man, it's... I'm not sure if you heard that, the house kind of creaked there. It's pretty windy at the moment here in old New Zealione. The thing I want to get started with today is actually doing some of the research. So the first thing that we need to craft up is a table. And it looks like the recipe for this hasn't changed. It's two planks and three slabs on top. Oh, and you can make a stone table now as well with slabs and clean stone. And it appears to be the only thing. We'll go ahead and start with the wooden table because that's the material that I have the most of. Yeah, looks like we're going to need to head back inside for this really quick. So I think we're only going to need one table for the research, but we should probably actually uh, make two of these things would be a good plan. So if we get two of those, yeah, that'll give me six. And I need one more. That'll give me enough materials to make two tables. Like so. There we go. 
Right, so now the next step that we need to do, where am I going to even put these things? Uh, I guess just for now we can uh, keep them in here, put them next to the bed, bedside tables. <laughs> uh, I want to get started with the arcane workbench, crafting with magic, and we can also get the research table, which is basically what those two turn into. So the arcane table, it takes our wand, and you just click on the table, fairly simple, so let's get the wand out. I haven't really been uh, keeping this equipped on me right now because... Uh, it basically doesn't have a purpose yet. There's nothing we can use it for until now, that is. There we go. Let's put that on the table, and it looks like just in TC4, the orientation of the wand on there appears to just going to be uh, static. Okay, you can take the wand back out like so, but then you can't use it to create any of your magical recipes. Now, this seems to be pretty much identical to what happened in Thorncraft 4. Uh, and the next one that I want to make is the research table to gather knowledge. You just need to take some scribing tools and a wooden table, okay. And the recipe for scribing tools is a glass bottle, a feather, and an ink sack. I should have those materials around here. I did do some harvesting of glass in the desert, so I've got some of that. Now I need three of those, actually. I'm going to need some feathers and an ink sack. Those should be in this other chest here. Uh, spot them before bird. <laughs> there we go. Uh, feathers right there, so that is all good to go. Head over to this crafting station. I should probably actually uh, put this arcane workbench over here now, just so that I get used to it. We don't need that guy anymore. This arcane workbench works exactly the same as the normal workbench in Minecraft, except it does a heck of a lot more. <laughs> you can actually craft magical stuff with it. Alright, let's go ahead and put in a glass file, or glass bottle. These are, yeah, the files are the Thorncraft version. So there it is, the scribing tools, which only has one voila tools inside it. Alright. Okay, we got the, let's go ahead and right click that, and there you go, that is the research table. It actually seems to have gotten a complete change, it looks like there's a little mini drawer here, perhaps there's a internal storage, ooh, nice genuine leather right there, and it looks like we don't actually uh, know any research whatsoever. Oh well, I'm going to go ahead and take my scrubbing tools back out, or actually I think I might do what I did with the uh, TC4, where I actually... I've got another scribing tool just so that I could keep that one in the workbench. So if I get another ink sack and another feather, I can, I've already used these glass bottles. Got the glass bottles, so just go ahead and make another scribing tool just to keep on my person. And I should just need to get some paper as well. Uh, my sugar cane, I've got a decent amount of sugar cane now thanks to the farm. Uh, let's go ahead and just turn as much of this into paper as we can. We're going to use up all of that paper eventually and probably land some. Alright, so how you get started with research is you come into the Thormonomicon like so. We explained this in the first episode. The one that I want to get started with is actually sort of one, the fairly basic one here, Nitor, Mystical Flame. And it looks like there's actually a uh, Nitor itself has gotten a facelift. So all we have to do is click this with a scribing tools and paper in your inventory, and it'll give you the research note, which is right here. Alright, so that's got a yellow dot on it, so it's probably involving iron of some kind. Oh, okay, you can only see these once you actually uh, get some stuff in there. So, welcome to the researching minigame. It wasn't explained too well last time, I don't think, or at least my explanation wasn't that great. So what we need to do is we need to link this to that. But in order to do so, we need to put some aspects inside here, and this is kind of our aspect pool right here. I think what I'm going to do for this one, let's see if I can, I think I'm going to try what I did uh, last time uh, in the sort of the end of the series. Let's get some Portentia that doesn't come up with the little things like in TC4. I think what I'm going to do is take this, put that there, okay, I don't need, it, you know everything now, but, okay, I see. Uh, let's see, yeah, I think what I'm going to do next is put some order right there. Basically, um, what what I'm trying to say here is for those who are new to the series, uh, I think that the researching system in this game is a little bit too easy. I've gotten fairly good at it, so what I like to do is basically, whenever I do a research, I only like to use one type of aspect of, that, like, one, as, one aspect of each type per research if I can, which basically means... I've already used Portentian Ordo and Lux and Ingis as well, I suppose, so I can't use those ones anymore to finish off this research. It's just an extra level of difficulty that I've imposed on myself, which I 
I personally find more enjoyable. Uh, you can go ahead if you want to and just kind of uh, cheese it a little bit if you want to go Ingyis, Lugs, Ingyis, Lugs. I mean, yeah, that works, but it's, you know, it's cheesing it a bit. <laughs> I'm going to go ahead and get two of those, and I'm actually going to get a bit more Portentia, just so that's kind of in the pool there. We're actually almost running out of juice already. Let's go ahead and get some more Tus back in there. And there you go, that is the Discovery. We've linked the two aspects together, and that gives us the Discovery for Nitor, the Mystical Flame. Right-click to learn the Discovery, so you just take it into your inventory like so. Right-click, and there you go, it comes up with like a little Achievement Unlocked sort of thing. Right, so let's go ahead and have a look at it, and there is a gold star next to it, you lucky people. Let's go ahead and read about it. This flame seems to be fueled by magic itself. The number of uses for an ever-burning flame seems endless. But unfortunately, it seems to produce much more light than heat. Despite that, it could still prove to be a steady source of energy. Nitor can also be placed in the world to act as a magical light source. It will take on the colour of any dye you combine it with in a crafting table. Okay, so there you go, that is the crafting recipe for it there. You need to take some glowstone dust in a crucible, which we haven't explained yet, as well as some Ingis, Lux, and Portentia. And that gets you Yellow Nitor. Okay, but it's, it shows here in the actual picture that there are different types of Nitor. Perhaps that's something that we can work on later on. We're actually going to need to get the crucible going if we want to make some of that. Okay, that's going to be a cauldron, which is seven iron. That's a vanilla recipe. Cauldrons are kind of not the greatest thing, are they? <laughs> they're, they're basically, they're kind of a way of getting water around the whole nether thing, if you want. But okay, where am I going to stick this thing? I guess I can kind of stick this in this area over here. Let's take our wand, and for free, turn it into a crucible. I think also as well, while we're doing this, before we get too far ahead of ourselves, I think the next thing that we should make is the Thormometer, which is this guy down here. We'll go ahead and read about this one. This Thormometer is one of the most useful and important tools in a Thaumaturgist's arsenal, second only to the Wand. And before I proceed any further... Uh, my least favourite animal in the game. <laughs> <laughs> and that is one of the reasons they make two annoying sounds. Anyway, oh my goodness, what else we got here? Firstly, it allows you to scan objects, creatures, or mystical phenomena and determine their magical makeup. You simply need to click on things to scan them. Things that can be scanned for new information will be surrounded by golden question marks while you hold the thermometer. Secondly, they display the current and base aura in the chunk you are located in. Pressing F while holding it allows you to change one aspect the aura displays. Okay, so the crafting recipe for this is fairly basic. Two gold ingots, some glass, and two water shards. No vase cost, so it can be made in a basic workbench if you so desire. I'm going to go ahead and use my air shards because I have the most of those. Let's take two of these, and my glass is over in this chest. Yeah, so like the Thermonomicon said, we're pretty much going to be carrying this around with us for the rest of the game, just like the old Thormy and Wand here. And where is the gems? Right there. The shards. Thormometer! It actually appears to have gotten a pretty big facelift, hasn't it? It's kind of a, a 2D sprite now with a nice animation of something running around in there. Ooh, hello. Oh, it works completely different from the old one. Oh, the knight's here, so we're just going to quickly sleep the night away. <laughs> there are a lot of golden question marks all over the show. So how does this work exactly? Okay. Do we have gained knowledge of Tara and Ereba, I see. And you can pretty much do that with anything, I suppose. Yeah, can you right-click again? Nothing new? Okay. Shift click, nothing new can be learned from that. Nothing new from there, what about this dude? Ingis, nothing new from that. Let's keep going there, Wakwos, Fabrico. I think that's everything that's inside our house, so yeah, basically once you get one of these things, you kind of just want to uh, click on all of the things and try and learn as much as you can. Uh, let's head outside and see what we can find here. 
I'm just wondering exactly how this is working. So can I learn anything from leaves? Nothing new. And what about wood? Probably not. No, okay. What about azure bluettes or azure bluettes? However you pronounce that. Weak tooth and sensus and they're very cool. I guess while we've got it over here, let's go ahead and take a look at the Eldritch Obelisk. Perhaps we'll get some some of the more sinister aspects in the game. I'm thinking Wakwos, Tenebre, perhaps a bit of Exanemis. Oh, Tall Grass has apparently got something in there for us. In TC4 you could scan mobs, so let's quickly test that out. Yeah, you get some bestia in that dude. Okay, nothing new from that. What about the uh, the old poppies? No, nothing in poppies. That's a very cool sound on there, by the way. It, fortunately, it doesn't tell you the name of stuff like the old one did. Obsidian, maybe? Bit of Tenebrae in there. The capstone, some Alienis, and that. Oh, hello. You have discovered something that could aid future research. You have discovered something new about infusion. Sweetness. Ooh, hello. Something right there that I can see very small. Nothing new can be learned from that. Man, is that like a glitch? You've gained practical knowledge about Motus and I've discovered something that could aid future research, I'm sure. And that guy, nothing new can be learned from the giant floating pillar of death. That's okay. <laughs> yeah, that's a basic use here of the thermometer. That's actually uh, changed quite a bit. Let's go ahead and... Uh, Tap F a few times, showing the higher level in the area. It's not quite up at the normal area. I'm, I'm assuming those little triangles that are up in the top left there are sort of normal levels. It looks like it's gone down quite a bit, or if, if, it, if it goes down. Oh man, this chunk over here is really low. Yeah, this is old. Uh, whoa, man, that is getting lower by the second. Yeah, those are old mechanics from TC2, the whole... Uh, keeping the gauges on the screen. There's a lot of Ignis here though. A lot of Aqua, Terra, uh, Ordo and Politio, and the Wittium levels are pretty much non-existent. Perhaps there's a little bit of Wittium around. Let's have a look. Yeah, I'm not really seeing that much. Not, I'm not seeing anything in the Wittium department, which I, I guess is a good thing. We probably don't want to see any Wittium at this point. And then that just shows the ratios, okay, which, so everything is more or less the same. There's a bit more terra and stuff like that around, which kind of makes sense, seeing as we are in a, you know, a grassy biome, a plains biome. Perhaps if we move into the desert, yeah, the Ignis's bar is going to go up a little bit there. Okay. Yeah, so that's a basic run through of the thermometer. I think we're going to finish off this episode by uh, doing a, another research here. So I still have my scribing tools and paper. What are we going to learn about next? Perhaps something a little bit more useful. Okay, and that shows you the green button. New page added. Yeah, but I haven't discovered the research there yet. Uh, what are we going to research next? Let's have a look around, shall we? Could do some elemental or uh, metallurgy. Or maybe we'll just do something like uh, research expertise, knowledge is power. Uh, getting uh, more efficient research out of the way is probably something that we want to get fairly soon. Looks like we've got a pink a little sphere on there. Okay, and that gives, that's probably to do with the Cognitio, I would say, as well as Sensus and Ordo in this research here. So, uh, hold on. It got rid of what I already learned there. Hmm. Okay, I, I used to, I had Portentia and... Oh, uh, well, it was Luke's, I believe, there, but it looks like they've dispersed. Okay. Well, let's get started with this guy. I think what I'm going to do is I uh, get some Perimultatio going. Well, that guy connects to Ayr, doesn't it, as I recall? So I can do something like that, and then Wolatus, I think, would probably be a pretty good plan. I just want to check what the recipe for Wolatus is. Ayr and Multus, okay. So let's get some Multus and then turn that... Uh, into uh, Wolatus, like so. That way I can do that, and I think Motus will connect to that, not sure. Let's try it. Okay, so that's those guys hooked up. Now, Kongitio, on the other hand, might be a little bit trickier. I'm thinking of going through Luke's is probably the best bet, but I just want to check the recipe. Uh, Spiritus, Spiritus, possibly, because I think Sensus is made. Yeah, Spiritus right there, but I think Sensus is too far away. Yeah, probably our best bet here is just to go something like uh, Ignis, 
and then make some loops with our iron and ingies, and there you go. Fairly efficient, almost looks like a uh, bacteriophage for those in the scientific community. Knowledge is power. Let's learn about research expertise. Oh man, nice blue eye right there. And that appears to have unlocked how research mastery. Oh man, <laughs> that'll be pretty fun to research. So let's go ahead and read about this one. You've become more efficient at performing research. Awesome. Whenever you remove an aspect that you placed in the hex, there is a 25% chance that you'll regain the research point. Sweetness, so typically uh, you'd have a 100% chance to lose, but the 25% to keep it is really nice. You are also now able to see one aspect you need to combine to create an aspect you're hovering over. And that's something that's really useful, actually. Oh, let's keep reading, though. Hovering. And lastly, it gives you the ability to consume a knowledge fragment to add one point to each primal. Okay, it looks like research in general has actually been uh, changed a little bit. Perhaps it doesn't keep a hold of uh, your compound aspects anymore? I'm not sure what happened there. I think it went up a little bit because we were running around with our thermometer. Well, I think what I'm going to do, guys, off camera here is just uh, continue running around and uh, scanning various things in the world here. Probably some more stone and things underground, cobblestone, water maybe as well. More animals and you know, acacia trees and stuff like that. I'm going to go ahead and do that off camera and we'll come back in the next episode and we'll continue doing some more basic researches here. And I'll probably have uh, torn down this little house that's right here, just the starter shack. And I'll probably have moved in down into that first little hobbit hole there. But that's it from me. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. Thank you very much for watching. Kia kaha, and I'll see you in the next one.